What's up? I got quite the treat for you today. Welcome back to Worst First. And this is sort of like a random Worst First uh, guest because someone who listens to both of our podcasts tagged our podcast together on Instagram and said that these are my two favorite podcasts. Um, So I have Spencer Harry here from Cult Leader Podcast, which I'm so excited. Thank you for coming all this way from Long Beach. I'm so excited to have you here. Thanks for having me. Yeah, and, and and I looked into your podcast and I was like, I have to have him on because you talk about what we end up talking about a lot on this podcast, which is like really dark, macabre stuff. And we talk about a lot of depression, anxiety, ghosts, aliens. You talk about cults. You talk about the occult. You are in it. I'm in it. You are in it. In the game. And I love, honestly, how much you talk about anxiety because that's something I talk about with my listeners too. Oh, wow. Wow. I mean, we're all anxious. I think especially this year. Oh, yeah. It's brought brought out the health anxiety in all of us. And so that's- Do an you have ac- health anxiety too? Horrible. Do you it's go she to the health. doctor 24-7? Oh, I've been to the emergency room and left with like thousands of dollars in bills just because I needed them to tell me that nothing was wrong. Okay, so before we get into this dark, scary shit that we're going to get into with you- I want to talk to you about your health anxiety because I didn't sure. even know you suffer from that too. I suffer from that. So you go to the doctor and you don't believe them, right? When they tell you that you're fine because you feel ill a lot. I need like, I I just need constant backup. Reassurance, and, yes. Yeah, constant reassurance or like I'll call a friend and I'll be like, do you, do you ever feel like this in your leg? And they'll be like, yes. And I'm like, but do you feel it the same way that I feel it? I, I need that. Like my sister is the same way, total hypochondriac, wow. which is great because yeah. we can call each other, each other and, yeah. and she'll be like, She'll be like, you're fine. You're fine. Yeah. You're yeah. Okay. Do you ever get like heart stuff, like the palpitation? Well, that's what led to I, I, a couple of years ago. I was traveling for work and I was in Columbus, Ohio, and I was just having these crazy chest pains, but like it was like fluttering. But then also, yeah. yeah. So I went to the hospital and of course, they gave me like a CT scan, everything. And of course, nothing was wrong. They were like, you're probably, it sounds like anxiety or exhaustion. And I'm like, okay. Like Doesn't I, it blow your mind that anxiety can be so physical? Well, and I think in this COVID world, especially, it's kind of heightened almost where you're like, like if I wake up and my throat's a little scratchy, I'm like, this is it. This is, it's coming. And you're it's like, happening. I'm going to die. I'm going to be the one of the 30 year old people that dies. God. Or you're in your 20s, probably. <sighs> You Almost young. in my 30s. Yeah, you look young. So you're like, and then you start, and then your head spirals. And because we're like that, we start thinking, oh, we're going to be that person who was the young case who randomly fucking their lungs exploded. There's a certain Am level. Am I triggering you? No, there's a certain <laughs> level of narcissism that has to go with it though, right? When it comes to that type of thinking, it's like, oh, um, it's I'm going to be the one in a million. It's it's going to be me. Because we we feel very special too. I oh. think it's a thing with people with anxiety. They feel, we feel like, and I almost think, I don't want to say this about everyone, but I'm going to be narcissistic <laughs> for a minute because we feel kind of self-important a little bit. Like we're like, it's, like we are going to be the people. We're the chosen one. Like we're the one this is happening to. Uh, it's like very dramatic. I mean, my husband, he doesn't get it. Like I slept for... Uh, so only six hours yesterday and then we had to get up early for me it was like getting up at 10 a.m. And I was I felt sick all day like I had a cold because my body can't handle getting less than like 12 hours of sleep. It's like I yeah you feel a little off and it just it you can it can fucking run with it. So yeah. I've learned like how important it is to have a set routine like mm-hmm. I go to sleep at the same time every night That's I smart. wake up at the same time every morning because if my routine is thrown off then I'm like just fucking losing it's horrible, my mind. Right? And you're drinking a coffee. How do you do that? Or is it tea? Tea. Okay, good. Okay, I was going to say, I can have no caffeine. I can have one. I was talking to my friend about this yesterday. I can have one cup of coffee in the morning, but I recently, my most recent attack, sorry if I'm boring. No, let's talk about it because my audience, like we relate to this. I had an eye twitch that started like a week before Christmas. Oh, and yeah, it, it started, I like popped my tire on the freeway and then I just was so anxious. I had so much going on just those couple weeks that I was just like, I think I lost it. And I just had this pulsing in my bottom eyelid. Mm -hmm. It was going like this, like twitching. Oh, just twitching. And it didn't go away for a month Mm -hmm. until last week. And I, so I cut out because I used to have a coffee in the morning. Then I'd have like a coffee in the afternoon, but now I can just have the one in the morning. It wakes me up. I'm good. But I also started taking CBD every morning, which I saw on your Instagram. You take CBD. And I love it. Does it have ashwagandha root in it? No, do you know I, I what's don't in know. It? It's, Dead. It's, You're like, you just take no, it. No, it's, it's Fields brand. So I did like a 
collab with them and like yeah. i don't know i've always been like an on and off cbd person i'm also sober so like i don't oh, me too are you mm -hmm. i don't fuck with anything that will like make me no, feel weird in any way whatsoever yeah. And I, so I've always dabbled in CBD, but I just started taking it in the mornings, like two weeks ago, every morning, I just have like 20 milligrams of CBD or whatever. And I have felt such a noticeable difference mm -hmm. just overall, just like throughout the more day, energy, more, more energy relaxed, and calm. calm. I feel like I can focus on things and my mind isn't constantly like yours is only 20 milligrams of CBD. That's all I take. That's low. Well, I also, I mean, I've been sober for such a long time. I feel like I'm, I got sober when I was 16. Uh-huh. Ooh. A ghost. What made our lights all just go out? I think it was this. I think it was me. Uh-oh. Hold on. <laughs> oh, my God. That'd Technical be so difficulty. crazy if it just did that. I would have like a, uh, I'd be like, oh, my God, because you're here. The cults are, there we go. Wow. Just like that, we're back. You could have totally fucked with me right now. You could have been like, a, the spirit followed me and then what just convinced that? me that a spirit was in my house. I just look off. Yeah. <laughs> You're like, I gotta go. She followed I me here. <laughs> I'm gonna She's leave her here. here. <laughs> I'm gonna leave her here with you. And then all of a sudden just leave the podcast. I just fucking, <laughs> I start hyperventilating. No, I would never do that to a fellow, a fellow anxiety, anxiety person. person. What is wrong with us? And so is that kind of like also what led you into like being in invested in death and murder and the occult yeah. and darkness because it's like you are it's what you fear you think about it a, a lot, lot. Yeah. i mean i lost my dad when i was super young oh, and then sorry. a couple years ago i lost my mom super unexpectedly as well and that a couple months after that is when i started the podcast as just like i needed somewhere to direct my attention that wasn't work but it also wasn't uh, oh that also wasn't just sitting in a pile of grief mm -hmm. and so i just started being more like active and I was like you know what I'm just gonna do something with this but I do think I have actually luckily online found a few other friends who lost their parents unexpectedly and I think that that's where a lot of my health anxiety comes from because Absolutely. you randomly lose people and it's like what the fuck like is that gonna happen to me it's like is this my lifespan but isn't it so hard to cope with I mean I talk with my therapist about this all the time and I tell her I'm like it's so perplexing to me that we, we don't know when our last day is going to be well, and when and as a control freak, it's, it's like hard, but when you're in it, it feels so crazy and mm -hmm. overwhelming. But I also, luckily it's not as constant for me. Yeah. So I feel like I'll come out of a period of it and then I'll be like, oh, like I'm okay. That was crazy that I was thinking that way. Like, it's really crazy that I thought I had brain cancer because I had a migraine. Mm -hmm. Like I, it automatically just goes to the worst and Google obviously never Helps. Don't Google your symptoms, Never. guys. If that's one thing I've learned, I mean, I have it all. Like I have like a um, an app that tracks my heart rate, and I wear this I, ring. This tracks my heart rate and my sleeping patterns I love and it. my breathing. And you know, like I, I'm constantly monitoring, which isn't healthy, but no. but it's hell. It's reassuring. You know what I mean? If I'm like looking at it, like whatever oh, makes you feel yeah. like you're not gonna lose your mind in that yeah. moment, I say whatever okay. helps. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Well, I'm so glad that we are like the same person. We're here. <laughs> yes. And we're here and we're alive. We're not sick. No, we're not sick. Thank God. As far as we know. Um, <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> you leave. Um, yeah. Um, so I want to get into, I want to get into your podcast because guys, if, if you guys have to go and listen, it's called the cult leader, L I T E R, like a leader of soda. Soda. Um, I want to know, like, what is the most, because this is worse first, I want to hear about the most fucked up, disturbing shit that you have ever heard on that podcast that you came across where you were like, oh my God, this is, I can't believe this happened. Have you heard of Armin Mives? No. From Germany? No. Okay, because that is one story. I mean, every story is shocking in its own way, but mm -hmm. sometimes I'm just like, I'll come across one and I'm like, this physically makes me feel uncomfortable, fucking crazy. Yeah. yeah. And like a lot of times I don't really focus on kids or anything, but I do like like the adult, like just craziness. And so Armin Mives was this guy in Germany and I think it was like 1999, 2000. He was a cannibal, spoiler alert. And he found his victim online, much like how I found you. Or you found, you know. <laughs> he pulls out a knife. <laughs> like, His assistant Madison's here. She helps dissect my body on my podcast. Madison, I'm hungry. <laughs> they, they <laughs> it's feeding time. They tag their podcast. 
<laughs> okay, so imagine the downloads. Oh my god. Um, no, so he yeah. Oh yeah, I want to talk about that too. So oh, Army Hammer too. Yes. Army Hammer's oh. talking about cannibalism, and now this We're guy's called talk Armin Mives. Armin Mives. It's Mives. M E I W E S. But you know okay. the whole German. Though. Mives. Yeah. Ooh. Okay. So he found his victim online. Yes. So he was, so it started out, it's actually kind of like a sad story. He was kind of like an Edward Scissorhands. I picture him growing up, like it was him and his mom, but he wasn't really that close with anybody. And he had this imaginary friend that he created growing up. And that was the person that he could tell everything to. He didn't have a lot of friends growing up, but uh, he mostly kept to himself. But eventually as he got older, he apparently it started when he read Hansel and Gretel for the first time. With like oh, the wow. storybook. The witch eats the children. Yeah, yeah, she eats the children. And I think that was when it first kind of clicked with him. Like, hey, that's something that I might be interested in. So Dead. Uh, as he as he grew up, uh, he is still kind of a loner, stuck to himself. Uh, around around 30, he starts going on these chat rooms, like these internet chat rooms. And it's back, it's 1999, 2000. So it's like AOL chat rooms, probably like that kind of vibe. Mm -hmm. And he finds other like-minded people that are also on these forums and they're into cannibalism. They're into the idea of it, which like I can see from a perspective, there's probably some sort of sexual turn on there, obviously, yeah. with oh, Army Hammer, which we can Weird. talk about. Yeah, we're totally going to do that. But uh, so he ends up meeting this guy online who made a posting on this website. I think it was called the Cannibal Cafe. And like, where's the FBI? <laughs> they're like, they're like, uh, they're like worried about how much taxes people oh. are paying. It's like, what about the fucking cannibal website? What about the, no one's talking about the cannibals <laughs> anymore. What's up with like, that? Why is the FBI not like in the cannibal chat room being like, making sure no one's getting eaten for real? I mean, okay, I it, was mean you, no, it was okay, new. No, it was new. So it was a cannibal cafe.com. Yes. And so he has this guy who made a posting on there. And I think he said something like dinner as the title of the posting and, or I, I want to be your dinner or something. So Armin ends up meeting this guy and having him come out on a train. He lived somewhat local. And this guy was like a totally normal guy. He had had a long-term relationship with a woman prior to this. He had a good job, like money, just seems like a normal, nice guy. He takes the train out to Armin's and they kind of talk about like, oh, like, what do you think we should do? Whatever. The guy, it's, I mean, obviously there's more details, but he's like, I want you to eat me. And Armin's like, like, I'm down. He's down for the cause. And Armin was living in his, the house that he grew up in. His mom had passed away at this point. But it was a, I think, 36-bedroom house in Germany. And it's this- So he was, like, rich? Eh, it's kind of, like, dilapidated. It oh, looks okay. just like a really old, like, Haunted German chateau. House. Yeah. Okay. We should go. <laughs> With go there, over. Airbnb. Hello. <laughs> yeah, why not? So, uh, anyways- the guy eventually builds up the courage to present himself to Armin. He takes his penis out and he puts it on the table and he's like, cut it off. No. He says, cut it off. For real? He said, I want you to cut it off. Armin grabs a knife and starts cutting, but the knife is too dull to actually uh, dissect the penis. Yeah, I yeah. can't cut through the flesh. And so he goes downstairs, he gets a sharper knife, like a steak knife, and comes back upstairs and he cuts his penis off. The guy's name was Burnt, I want to say, like B-E-R. How was the guy not fucking screaming in pain? Well, he he got such a fucking thrill from it. And I think that's part of the, well, I'll get into it in a second, but so he cuts off the penis, and the guy's like, I want you to cut it in half so we can eat it. So he cuts the penis in half, takes it downstairs, puts it on a frying pan with some wine, garlic, salt and pepper, and <laughs> it sizzles. And Tommy it loves garlic. It, um, <laughs> well, baby, let's cut off half your penis. It's too big come anyway. On. <laughs> Dad, I'm like, I actually could use a little less of it. Let's be honest. Sorry. He's, he's down there like, TMI. oh. Yeah, yeah, he's like, not loving this guest. Um, okay, so then what happened? They're grilling the, so, the, so he takes it the penis. He throws it on the pan, but because the pan's hot, it just fucking immediately sizzles up and burns. So like for what? You cut your penis off for what they at that point? They didn't get to eat it. No, they tried to, but they couldn't eat it. And I guess because the f the flesh was so fresh that the second it hit the pan, it just went like, Tch. but if you think about it, it's probably like skin around your nails or something like it probably dries like. Ew. Fast. So then what happened? <laughs> so they didn't eat the penis. Uh, he starts like kind of 
the victim starts kind of like coming in and out of consciousness. And this is the thing that's so fucked. It was they videotaped the How entire thing. How is this guy thing. a victim though if he wanted it? Well, right. And we'll also talk about that. So he he's telling him like, I love it. I'm getting such a rush from this. And Armin's just kind of like, okay, like, yeah, like that's great. The guy's like coming in and out of blackouts or whatever. And he is just, he's fucking loving it. He's, he's like telling him like out loud on the videos and everything. He's just like, I'm sitting, look at, I'm sitting in my own blood. Blah, You've blah, blah. watched like, these videos? No, you can't find the videos. Oh, okay. Um, the jurors at this trial did have to watch 19 minutes of the videos. And I guess they needed like intense therapy afterwards that the court had to provide for them. Uh, so cause the, it was so fucked. So fuck. Okay. Oh so anyways, he ends up eventually like, he's not going to stay alive. He's bleeding out everything. So Armin goes, I think to his room for a bit. And then he hears the guy kind of fumbling around upstairs in what they called like the slaughter room, which is where everything was going down. And then he hears him fumbling around, brings him up to the bedroom and then prays with him. So the two of them prayed together and then he slit his throat with a knife. And once he was dead, he decapitated him and hung him up from a hook on the ceiling and proceeded to uh, chop off his body parts, boil them and then store the meat for later on. Was this his first victim ever? Yeah, it was like the the first ever one. He had had multiple people, I think, prior, like come to the house, but they never actually got far. But Armin did say during the trial, like, I never, like, I did not get any sort of joy out of killing him. Like, I didn't even want to necessarily kill him. Like, the, the thrill of it for me was the actual act of everything and like the cannibalism aspect. But as yeah. far as like actually killing him is it's not something that he was interested in. So they go to trial because the way he gets caught is Armin was talking to this other guy online and it was some kid from Austria or something who was like, yo, this is actually really fucked up and told the police and the police came and arrested Armin because they found and they found the meat because he had actually been kind of smart about it. He cut out like a false bottom of the freezer and put the meat under there and then stacked regular meat on top of it. And so it goes to trial. But get this. Uh, cannibalism is what at the time was not illegal in Germany because it had never really been an issue that they had had before. They're like, do we need to make a law that you don't eat other people? <laughs> yeah. Like, do we need to They're do like, that? Do, is that or... something that has to happen? <laughs> Should we like enforce that or? So yeah. he, they give him eight years uh, during that first trial. They give him eight years for, I think like public disobedience or something because it's something you're not supposed to do. But technically, again, there's no, crime necessarily in the cannibalism aspect eight years for killing the guy and eating him (laughs) but they did end up doing like a second trial and uh, i think he got life there life in prison from there but there's a documentary and there's a doc no you're good there's a documentary uh on him where they actually like interview him and everything and it's actually interesting to watch but one of armin he did have this one female friend who in the documentary she's like even now i would trust armin to watch my children which i'm like I I don't think, okay, this is controversial. I don't <laughs> think he's necessarily like a killer. Like, I don't think yeah. he's like a serial killer or anything. I think he just loved cannibalism. I mean, he yeah. said himself, he's not interested in killing anyone. He just wants to, to eat part of them. Eat part of them. <laughs> he's like, can I have part of your penis without you dying? He wants an appetizer. He yeah. doesn't want <laughs> the whole like, meal. <laughs> okay. <laughs> he's like, just a little bit, just a Taste just has. a finger, okay? Can I just have a toe? It's like you don't even use long. it. Yeah. Imagine <laughs> us with our health intact. I mean, we couldn't even. I would never let anybody if eat me, I ever, ever dated a guy that was like, I want to eat you, I would be out of there so oh. fast. I don't care how fucking famous or hot or whatever. If he was like, I want to eat you, I'd be like, bye. Okay, so speaking of, can we fucking talk okay, about so Army Hammer? Okay, so let's talk Hammer. about Army Hammer. So I don't know if everyone knows who listens to this podcast knows who Army Hammer is. And I have an Army Hammer story, which is kind of weird. Do you? I do. Um. So... Okay, so Army Hammer is an actor. Um, he's best known for his role with Timothy Chalamet in um, Call Me, by, Call your me name. by Your Name. And it was a really profound, beautiful movie. Actually, a really awesome movie if you want to see it. He's a great actor. Um, but he's been in a bunch, of sh- a bunch of stuff. And most recently, he got divorced from his wife, Elizabeth Chambers, which is so random because I was on a flight with her once. Really? Yes. She's and pretty. She's so beautiful like I just wanted to get on here and say that because she's one of those people that 
It's like, I didn't even know she was famous. I just was like looking at her. I was on a flight with her and she had her two kids, their two kids with her alone. And she was so stunning. And I remember just being like stunned at how pretty she was. And then something happened and I ended up having to help her in some way, like help her or give her our seat or something like that. And she was just so nice and gracious and like messaged me on Instagram. And then I saw it. she was his wife Aww. and I was like, oh, random. But like so obvious because she was so stunning and like put together. It, anyway. it makes sense. It makes sense, right? So then all this stuff comes out about them getting divorced. They were together for years and years and years. And I felt so bad. You know, obviously, I don't know either of them sure. from Adam. So whatever. But I had that little experience with her. But then, then the texts, the the DMs come out. The DMs, which I, I at first, I only saw like two of them at first. Like I saw a few screenshots from an iPhone or whatever. And also, you never know what to believe is actually real. And people can Photoshop the craziest things. And I don't typically even... I don't really care about celebrity gossip Neither or any I, of but that. This is fucking creepy. But I'm like, I need to talk about this because it it's is part of like what you wild. There was like about. messages and it was all on this girl's account. And I feel bad because I can't remember the account. Yeah, it's okay. We don't now. need to shout her out. Yeah. It's fine. She's probably getting like <laughs> bombarded. I know. And so, I mean, it sounds like it was also like kind of like a dominatrix thing with mm -hmm. them. Like he wanted that like control. But I mean, he started saying some like fucking crazy shit. Like talking about, did you see the part about the deer? No, what did he say about the deer? He said he like shot a deer and ripped its heart out and ate it while it was still warm. Which like, that's not, that's sus. That's not normal. Okay, that I had an ex-boyfriend who went to Vietnam and for, for like work. Okay. And he cut the heart out of a live snake and eat it while, and swallowed it while it was beating. That's when I knew he was the one. No, I'm just <laughs> kidding. That, that's when that shit was over. But anyway- <laughs> disturbing as fuck the only thing i saw was the thing of him being like i want to eat you i've never said that to anyone before and nobody believed this girl and then she sent the screenshots of his face he sent yes. her pictures of his hand of his everything hand with his tattoos and he had his face in one of them like shocking shocking but you like you think he like might have some issues oh like yeah, definitely he seems sure. like a strange man I mean, there's a difference between being like, I want it rough or whatever. Yeah, or yeah, like, or I want to eat you like you're pussy. Yeah. But not like I want to eat you with like some fava beans. No, he's on some Arm <laughs> Armin Mives shit. He's on some Armin Mives shit. And it's like weird because his name's Army Hammer. And he is, that's German, isn't it? Like, yeah. maybe it's like a German thing not to like whatever. I mean. But I don't know. But how creepy. And then also there was like, then like the next couple days, videos came out of him just seeming crazed and his friend had like drugs on his hand and he like filmed himself doing the drugs doing the i drugs didn't see that off of his friend's hand and he's like i don't give a fuck and i'm like dude you have like the most amazing career army come to the sober life yeah, it's, it's better sober over here life is way i know everyone thinks sober people have a boring life but like no. um no we're like way more present than anyone and we have know, good stories we have good stories <laughs> you can't we, be sober without we remember good stories. the stories <laughs> um you know and it just it's just sad to me but it is. i mean it's like fuck it's like it makes me sad because i'm like fuck it's like you are you had such a great reputation and such a great actor and you're doing this to yourself well, he seemed like, very vanilla like he's so not vanilla. somebody that i would look at and be like oh this dude's like this dude's a freak he's that right. just goes to show how fucked up people are behind closed doors all of us. I mean, you never know. <laughs> like people look at celebrities and they just assume like because they're a celebrity or because they have a good PR team and nothing's come out on them that they're like the best people. Well, I'm sure we all know, especially living here, everything you you meet some fucked up people that you would think are like America's sweetheart. And then you're and like, then you meet them and you're like, whoa, whoa. <laughs> oh. OK. And I have some stories that I won't share, but I'm just saying, I mean, and then how about like even like Shia LaBeouf, not to get totally off topic, but. Did you hear about Shia LaBeouf and FKA Twigs? I mean, the thing is, I mean, it doesn't shock me that he's like that behind closed me doors either. because you see this progression. You see he's battled with sobriety before and he's battled with all these things. And he was a child actor, which like, is I mean, we have like our Hillary Duffs who are yeah. who thrive from that. And they're <laughs> so cute and seem so nice. But then you have people Demi that you Lovato. could tell like. Shia LaBeouf, it's like it's toll. Spears. It's just like years and years and years of that is a lot for anyone. It's hard. It's hard. It's hard. But I mean, it's never too late to no, leave, it's never leave that too life late behind. To turn your life around. But wow, that fucking Armin Mives story. That's fucking intense. <laughs> it's fucked, right? Everyone's gonna be googling him after this. this yeah, is like kind of fucking whoa, dude. I know. I was trying to think. I was trying to think. So my assistant's over there, Madison. When did I do that? 
It was like like no, 2019. I did an episode on it. I've never even heard of him. So if you guys want to hear like a full episode about that, go to the cult leader podcast and look up the Armin Mives story. Yeah. Wow. Okay. So we're going to take a quick break and then we're going to be right back with Spencer Henry from cult leader podcast on worse first. Stay tuned. Guys, we are back with Spencer Harry, uh, Harry Spencer Henry on call from Gold Leader. But I don't know why I want to say Harry every time I look at you. You remind me like Prince Harry or something. Wow, what it is. royal royalty <laughs> from uh, Cult Leader podcast. So happy to have you here on Worst First. Um, okay, so we're talking about all kinds of fucked up shit. We're talking about cannibalism. We talked about health anxiety. It's like <laughs> we're going like a, full, every corner. Like, <laughs> Welcome to the manic podcast. <laughs> Who knows what turn we're gonna take? Left, right. Wild. Anyway, um, clearly I didn't take my medication today. Um, no. Uh, so you are going to tell me another fucked up story. You have so many fucked up stories. That's what you do on the Cult Leader yeah. podcast is the, for all the fucked up um, stuff. All my followers are just going to go listen to it. Um, so I want to hear this. You said it's called the Daybells. So, yes, it's okay. it's I have I did like four parts on it. It's called like the Deadly Daybells because it's a more recent case. OK. And I'm surprised you haven't heard of it. So it was Lori Vallow and Chad Daybell. Okay. Uh, they were this couple from Utah and they had these two children, JJ and Tylee Ryan. They, they had a daughter and the son. And it, I couldn't even tell you the whole fucking thing in an hour because it's, there's so many different like playing Pieces parts in it. it. But the essence of it is that they were part of this cult. And so I'm like, I got to talk about a cult, right? Yeah. For namesake. And She's like kind of pretty. She has like curly hair. She's pretty. And Chad is kind of like a self-described prophet as most cult leaders are. He's like, I have secrets that that nobody knows. I'm definitely like one of the chosen ones, you know, the whole shebang. Yeah. In their heads, they came up with this whole concept of people being zombies and that they needed to get rid of the zombies. Like all people? Just certain people. Okay. She could, they could tell when these people turn dark. So they could look at you and they'd be like, Brittany, you're dark. Like, I, I think you're a zombie. Like, I think you've been taken over. Whoa. And so they did all this crazy shit. But basically, he was married at the time when they met. She was married. She has several husbands who have died mysteriously prior to meeting Chad, uh, which is the prophet guy. And so Chad's wife mysteriously dies shortly after he meets Lori. Lori and Chad start their affair. They run off to Hawaii and get married, but their two kids are nowhere to be seen. Her two kids, uh, JJ and Tylee. And so, like brain fog, I'm like trying to remember. The, they run off, they get married and the kids are just missing. And they ran off to Hawaii to get married. And like the news starts following them there because everyone knows that the kids are missing, but they're not saying anything about it. Like there's creepy footage of them in Hawaii and a cameraman going up and being like, where's your kids? Where's your kids? And she just smiles and doesn't say anything. Weird. And so it turns out this was about like a year long, I want to say, like start to finish of like the kids missing or whatever. They end up finding the bodies buried at Chad's house, the the two kids, which is obviously devastating. And they're, they've both been arrested since then. But, I mean, it was crazy because they got away with it for, like, a while. And they had all this, like, group around them that... Supported it? Supported it and also looked at them like they were prophets, like they were these godly people. And they would do a lot of crazy shit, which is, like, that's my favorite part about cults, is they all have their own like little little quirks yeah. that they do. Uh, Chad and Lori had a closet portal where they would go into their closets at their respective homes and talk to each other via this closet portal. And I'm just like... That's fucking weird. Like, how does that... Like, through a dryer vent or something? Like, <laughs> I'm communicating to you from the third dimension, but really it's just the dryer. Yeah. Um. Wow. So they had people that helped them kill their kids? They had people around them that I think knew all along that they were guilty, but didn't do anything to prevent it. She had this best friend, Melanie, Melanie Gibb, I think her name was, who covered for her because when the kids went missing, she was like, hey, Melanie, like the cops are going to call you. They're going to ask where the children are and tell them that you took him or my son or whatever to go see Frozen 2 or whatever and take a picture of kids outside the movie theater so that if you need to provide evidence that you can provide 
evidence. But like fully, like the whole story is basically she fell in love with this like charismatic cult leader guy and all these people fucking died around them, uh, including her own children. She killed her children? Yeah. How did she kill them? Well, she, I, I don't even think it's out yet whether she did it or he did it, but somehow the children died between the two of them. How old were they again, you said? JJ was seven, I want to say, and then Ty Lee. Ty Lee was a teenager. She was 17, I think. But that is fucking insane. Well, and so her, Lori's, her... She's but she was married a total of five times, I think. Ty Lee's dad died of a mysterious heart thing. And then she had another husband who her brother shot inside her house because apparently he was like abusive or whatever coming at him. So it's just like a whole fucked up story of a lot of different people around them, like dying this is mysteriously. So fucking weird. And how many people were in their cult? Like how many people believed this zombie? stuff it's hard because it was like an offset of mormonism what so it like they had followers from different groups in there and i mean i don't want to like i'm not stereotyping not mormonism Mormons, as a whole guys. i'm not Just doing chill out. don't come for me yeah. you utah bloggers <laughs> leave me alone come. i didn't yeah. do it no but uh it's just fucked. I mean, they had like this this group around them. I think it was like 12 people went to his house one time for this meeting. He would like hold these like little uh, seminars sometimes where he would speak because he was also an author and he wrote a lot of books about like what happens in the afterlife and this, that, what? the other. But it's, I mean, after doing so much research for this podcast, it's like you run into so many cults and you wonder like, you look at these cult leaders and they're never typically like hot. Right. right. And you're like, what is attracting what people to them? this person to this cult? And their I mean, confidence and their ability to talk. And their charisma. But yeah. it's like, if one person just says some crazy shit, no one believes them. But like, what is the difference between that person and this other person? And a lot of times cults do stem from some sort of like organized religion. Mm -hmm. uh, not always. Like, I mean, Manson wasn't really part of a religion or anything, but... I think it's taking these ideas, these yeah. these prophetic visions and all these types of, you know. And I mean, think about how many people feel lost in life and just want to hear someone say, I know what happens after we die. And I know. And, I, and I'm con I'm 100% confident in it. And I'm going to show you the way. And I'm going to tell you. And come with me. I'll tell you everything. And, they're, and they live it. Like they are fucking so into well, I think it. they have to believe it. Yeah, they have to. They they convince themselves, I think. We were talking, we were messaging the other day yeah. about that surviving death on Netflix. Yes. Did you finish it? So did good. you watch yes, it? Yes, I oh. did finish it. Yeah. I I mean, because I too am obsessed with the idea yeah. of like what happens. What, happens? After. what do you think happens after? Have you talked about that before? You know, I have, but I'm also so torn. So like I mean, I, I the reincarnation thing is all is really astounding. I had a medium on here who told me what happens, but she's like, you don't have to believe me, but sh this is what happens. So when you pass away, there's different levels. So you pass away, your soul leaves your body and goes back, you know, hopefully to heaven. Most people go to heaven. Sure. And when you get there, you do a big review of your life and there's all these different categories. Okay. So there's like different levels, like a level, like one, two, three, four, five. And then there's a, a spirit guide and then there's an angel. So like, once you pass all these levels and have achieved everything that you've needed to achieve or learn from life, your soul has learned everything that it's needed to learn and has learned every lesson that it's needed to learn. You no longer are sent back to earth. Okay. You then, you then elevate up to either a spirit guide or an angel and then you help the spirits that are coming in. So like that's kind of how she explained like it to me, and I and I and I think that's like really beautiful and like a nice way to think about it. But like, I also feel like I live in my human brain so much with ego, and 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 you know, and when I say ego, I mean in terms of being so aware of myself as a person and my thoughts, and like treasuring my thoughts and my feelings. And she's like, "There's no, there's none of that." when you die like when you die you are just your core self your soul is the most free happy like doesn't have a care in the world not anxious not anxious I like that. not scared of anything just like doesn't have a care in the world that's what she told me okay but i mean i don't know what is your opinion 
I mean, I battled with it for, I was like an atheist for a really long, I mean, I still don't know what I am. Yeah. I have no affiliation with any religion. I didn't really grow up with any religion, which I like because I have a good perspective. Like it's fresh. Nothing has mm -hmm. made me have any ideas of what happens after. Uh, so I've battled always between nothing. Mm -hmm. Like, <laughs> like we're just, this is the it. human like existence. Ants, yeah. Like when an ant dies, like where does an ant go? It fucking dies. And that's yeah. it. Like that we're just as, I get, I, that makes me upset when I think about that. But same. And so I had to start going elsewhere, but especially like after I lost my mom, I started thinking a lot about like the different things that are out there because I also do believe in certain things like karma. I believe in manifesting. I believe in all of that. And I also believe that like energy is such a strong thing and you can feel people's presence so much, even after they're gone sometimes that it's like, Okay, well, what is what is, that? what is that? I don't necessarily think the idea that I love, which a lot of people have talked about before, is like you go somewhere. It's kind of similar to the what the psychic was telling or the medium was telling you. But it like you go back somewhere to recharge and you're still with your people. You don't come back the same as everyone. Mm -hmm. But like you go back and like recharge and then eventually like you come back maybe you come back if you need to learn like you need to come back down you didn't learn fully what you where they say like learn. relationships like if you have any friends who like they're more, much more of like a mom to their mom like the relationship is kind of twisted mm -hmm. or it's kind of opposite of what it should be like who knows perhaps in a previous life they, they were, were opposite mother. roles yeah that's so i and i think about that a lot or did you ever meet someone and you feel instantly comfortable with them yeah and cozy and you're like Okay, so we've met before. Like, I know and, you. Like, yeah. I've known you at some point. Yes. And you're like, okay, very cozy. Like, something about your soul is very comfortable, and I'm immediately comfortable around you. Yeah. Which is, for people with anxiety, it's a big deal because we're not really comfortable around anyone, <laughs> not even ourselves. So when you, you get that feeling, it is a really strange feeling. But then I guess the thing that kind of throws me off a little bit is all the stuff with extraterrestrials because I believe in them as well. Okay. And so that throws me off from the whole, like I, I grew up Catholic. So that's like very hard for me because I do pray to God, whoever God means. Sure. It's like, I don't know. I don't put Something. a face on God, but I, I pray to a higher power. Um, do I believe Jesus was the son of God? I'm not quite sure. I like to believe that, but yeah. also like I'm a little skeptical, like that I shouldn't be, but I'm also like torn. So I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Um, so with the alien thing, I get kind of freaked out because then I start to think, you know, we are all, we all did just, I start to think the scientific way, like we did all just come from this big bang and like we happen to be here because like the right pieces of the right things happen to mold together and like, you know, a fish started to walk on land one day and now boom, we're human beings. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> is that, is that how it evolution? happened? I think it was like a, it was like a weird thing that came out of the water Something. and then like it started walking and it turned into like some kind of ape and then that ape turned into Neanderthal and then that Neanderthal turned into, uh, what is the guy? Um, a caveman? Man. caveman and then human human and then that, army hammer and then army hammer and then we're all army hammer um <laughs> but no but i you know evolved somehow from that i don't know could that's another theory don't hate me on this people that are religious because i am religious too um and then i'm thinking like because that same thing happened on other planets there are aliens and i think that happened in a different way there. And so they're different than us and breathe differently and see differently and think differently. And I think they're also a lot more intelligent than we are. I think we're the least. I hope, I hope so. I think a hundred percent they are. I think yeah. we're the least evolved species in the entire solar system, to be honest. Speci I mean, specifically us. We we're are like worried about like, <laughs> do my pants match my shirt? Like that's what we're worried about when they're yeah. like, when they're like climate change and saving the planet, we can see 10,000 years in the future. And I'm like, how much are these boots on Amazon? <laughs> like, we're just like the worst. Um, but you know, so like, I kind of think about that and I'm like, okay. you know, and, and so these really, um, these really like, uh, what was it? It was like the, the Navy, the Navy or the police force or something confirmed that aliens existed recently. Joe Rogan talked about it on his podcast and it was like a, printed it out like yeah. it was like a big thing and so everyone was just kind of like what you know and like why haven't they come down so much happened in the past year week yeah month week, year, yeah. year four years that i'm like 2020 was just a lot like 2020 was just like and then this and, and then, then this, this and then this and then this and like you just kind of like couldn't take it all Fuck. it was just like you had to just take what like stuck to you and 
So Alien stuck with me. I was like, Well, that what? slid by. That slid, yeah, slid under by my a radar. Lot of people, slid by a like, lot of people. You should totally no. get into it. Um, so basically then people were like, well, okay, well then why haven't they come down yet? And they're like, well, think about how fucking scared you are when you're going for a walk at night and a sprinkler turns on, like your heart drops. Like, they're scared. Imagine if you were walking at night and a fucking alien walked out in front of you, you would literally die of a heart attack. Like they know we're not ready. But why, but then why won't they make any contact? Why won't they like, they have. like put up, put up, like. But more specific. I mean, they've had time to work on this. They've I would had to assume. be very careful though, because it's like if they do something too big, it's going to go all over the Cause news. Cause a war, and then like the the people in the Midwest are going to be like, "Oh hell no, I'm not letting no goddamn alien take my goddamn country limit." Martha, go load up the shotgun. Like they know, like how we they're are. They're leaving the capital, and they're like, "If I see one fucking alien, I know what they're. They, maybe they were looking for aliens in the oh capital. God, maybe that was the I whole mean, thing." Like, like it's literally like the aliens know, like they know how we will react. I wouldn't fuck with that. If I was an intelligent species yeah. from another world and I looked at earth, right. I would be like, I'm good. So there's this documentary that you have to watch. I believe it's called Phenomenon. I'm going to fuck it up. I'm going to look it up after and tell you, but there's a documentary on iTunes where in Nigeria, um, or it was either Nigeria or somewhere in Africa, like in the nineties an alien, spaceship landed by a children's school and it was in the, what? in the brush yeah and all the children ran out to the spaceship and they said that a little man came out and he was all gray it was a gray there's all different types of aliens yeah i'm gray. familiar with some of them yeah, yeah with the black eyes and the gray skin and he had a black suit on and he didn't communicate with his mouth he communicated telepathically with all of them and they all say the exact same thing that he showed them images of the environment being- did they talk to the kids they didn't talk, but they did tell up. They tell up. No, but like the, in the documentary. Or- yes. I'm going to tell you the name of it. I think it's Phenomenon. I, I think it's Phenomenon. Uh, someone already knows who's listening to this, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to find it before you leave and show you. So they talked to their, to interview the kids right after this happened. And they said the kids all said the exact same thing. They set them in different rooms and all the kids said the exact same thing. They drew the exact same picture of what he looked like. Oh. He or she looked like. And said that the alien, they didn't feel he communicated to not be afraid. They didn't, they said they felt a little scared. But then as soon as he started communicating with them, yep. As soon as he started communicating with them, they felt calm. He showed them all images of the world being destroyed by pollution and us destroying it with all of the things that we're doing to it and said that we needed to save our planet because we're going to destroy our planet. And that's all he showed them was environmental, climate change, all that stuff. And then they left and they were like, it was crazy. Then when they left, they felt like they got out of the trance. Then they got all those kids together like 20 years later, put them all in a room as adults. And they said the exact same thing. I have to, I have to watch this. I have to watch this. The most, I'd say like solidified piece of evidence that this happened and people were, and they were like, we don't care if like people believe us or not. Like it happened. You don't have to believe us. Like it it, it happened and it's real. And I just think that the aliens are just so careful about how they, you know, how they approach us because it could get big and really bad really quickly, especially with like how we are, because we are very volatile. It's not that they're volatile. It's that we're volatile. They're coming here to try to save us and warn us so that we don't hurt ourselves. Because if we destroy this planet, this is what, and there's another great documentary called Capturing the Light. And they did the same thing telepathically with this woman. She's an old woman. She had nothing to gain from this, lived in Canada, never sold her story for anything, just told her local news what happened. Jeez. Her local reporter, like what happened. And then there was, it's called Capturing the Light. You have to watch it. Um, they told her the same thing. They said, you know, if we destroy our planet, it affects the whole solar system. So then it affects their planet. It so affects- that's why they so were they're like, trying to listen, be like, can you guys chill the fuck out? We're like the drunk, like cousin at the party who's had like, like way too many sangrias. And you're like, so. listen, like love that you love the sangria, but like, can you not? Cause you're spilling shit everywhere and ruining everyone's time. Just stop it. Just fucking stop fucking it. Fucking stop so it. So that's us. We're the worst. Like, we are the ones that are just like, yeah, can I have another plastic bag at the grocery store? Can I have, like, another? I know. I feel so bad. <laughs> Actually, I just started drinking out of glass because I I was doing the whole, um, what was it called? The little jar, the fucking micro whatever uh-huh. thing that you carry around with you, micro flask or whatever. Um, and I was, like, not, like, loving 
the wa- like I have to have spring water. I don't know why. Are you okay. sensitive to water? I'm sensitive I'm, I'm to water. pretty specific so with So I found water. like a company that does glass bottles and I recycle them. And so I feel good about it. But I also bring my own bags to the store. Like, it's just like, if you think about it, like how many of us every day are going to the store, getting a fucking plastic bag, like- where does that plastic bag go? In the trash. Well, it's hard because like, of COVID too, though, because I like know. normally I have like a reusable cup yeah, that I bring yeah. everywhere, but like, if, like I now want a tea. Paranoid. I'm like, I can't give. I mean, that's paper. You can recycle that. So it's I, no big deal. I will recycle it. Yeah. So, I mean, but anyway, I'm just saying like consciously. So that's like the whole thing. Like, do you get into aliens on your pod or not really? It's I, I haven't, but yeah. I'm going to make you one day yeah, come and I will. talk about aliens. I will. Me. And I'll bring like all my, I'll actually look everything up ahead of time. I want printouts. Yeah, I will. <laughs> I'll print everything out. No, I will. I'll come I'll with my pictures. facts. I need to get more prepared when I do my podcast because like, I don't like, I'm, yeah, just watch this, watch this. Like Capturing a Light is a great documentary about aliens. I've talked about it on here and I believe it's called Phenomenon on iTunes that has, is it Phenomenon? Yeah. Madison, thank you. See, I need a Madison. Nina the Wiener. <laughs> Everyone you know, needs a Madison. Fucking, I'm like, Nina, can computer? you double check the <laughs> name of the, the movie? Okay, so any one last little short story that you have that's like super fucking weird? What about like a witch story? <sighs> well, you know what I've actually been really into lately what? is exorcism stories. Oh, scary. Those uh, are come real. Come on, Catholic. <laughs> Those are real. I believe in that shit 100. Oh, terrifying. So there is there was this girl named Annalise Michelle. I think she was in Germany as well. So, so one of my listeners is going to be like, yeah. you're wrong. Fact you check. just told yeah. us the story. They fact you. Check, check you. All the time. But I cover a new fucking story every week. I yeah. can't remember everything. Yeah. But her, they performed over 20 exorcisms on this girl. Holy and man. it was the inspiration behind the exorcism, of the Emily movie. Rose. Oh, the exorcism. The uh-huh. exorcism. Okay. And the exorcist. It's it's like fucked because there's all this audio footage of her that like when I heard it, like I also don't have one specific God that I'm necessarily praying to. But when I heard it, I was like spraying in the like, name of Jesus. <laughs> yeah. You're like you're all in church. You're like at a Baptist church. <laughs> like, oh, Jesus. In that bag right now yeah. is like manifestation powders yeah. and sprays and yeah. stuff. I'm like, I got to fucking protect you myself. Baptized, this. So you got to be really careful. <laughs> I was baptized. Were you okay? So you're good. Baptized. Not to be like Episcopalian or something. I don't really okay. know. One of the, one um, of them. so what's her name? Annalise, Mich- Annalise Michelle. And so it's, it started out. She would just, she, they initially thought it was, um, a brain disorder because she had she had hit her head or mm-hmm. whatever and she was having she had a seizure on one occasion but it the weird thing about it is they chalked all of her strange behaviors up to her having this seizure but when they did like a brain scan after like a postmortem brain scan it showed that she had her never actually wrong. had a seizure yeah it was completely normal and that's what fucking terrified me because when you hear the tapes. I mean, she was just fucking in another voice. Like, You're like, this like, bitch could either be a voice actress or this is the real Like, thing. either the talent. Yeah, yeah. Either the talent or the terror. <laughs> okay. Like, she would be on TikTok just like. <laughs> oh, my God. That's my biggest fear is getting possessed because, like. It can happen. A little bit of mental illness. I'm like, just is it mental illness, illness or a demon? Well, um, it was one of those things where you think one day yeah, all of us could just yeah. snap and you could start. But I'm lucky. Like, I don't see shadow people. I never have. Like, there's actually a lot of people who see. Have you ever seen one? There's one behind you right now. Stop. Hate that. Um, There's actually a lot of people that have seen shadow people in their life. And I've never seen one. Thank God not. Knocking on wood. Knock on wood. I've never seen any dark shadows or whatever. Maybe as a kid, maybe a little bit, but that was in my head. But um, but there's a bunch of people actually. There's like a, a forum of people who have all uh gotten together that have seen the man in the tall black hat. The tall. I don't man, like that. The tall man in the tall black hat is a very common thing that many people have all seen. Have you seen him? So. It's one of those things where I was so little that I can't, I don't know if it's something that I heard later on. And then you think, cause when you're little, I mean, I can't remember shit. I have oh a, I have God. a horrible memory, but I know when I was little one time, like I saw like a shadow man in the room, like what they would describe it as, but that's, I, I haven't had a lot of experiences. Was he a, other a tall than shadow with a black hat? That's like, like I could say yes right now, but I can't, I don't know if and it actually was little, right? Little. Yeah. See, 
there are so many people. But it could have been my closet. Was uh, there was a shadow on the closet or something? You but know, there's so many people like you who actually have like more distinct memories of being like, oh yeah, like he lived in our house it and happened. like we would see him and like there's hundreds of them saying that they've seen this guy and he's a tall shadow with a black hat on and he they've everyone has seen him where where they is were he younger i mean i don't know i think he like lives in between this world and that world and i'm like i don't know i did something right my dad prays for me i don't know what it is but like i haven't seen any of this plexiglass that i've gotten has protected <laughs> me i don't know what i do i have a crucifix next to my bed sometimes i sleep holding it but i do think that sometimes i do think my anxiety is actually just being super sensitive to like they they say that the though. energy between not to be a total psycho but between realms between realms because I have a panic attack almost every night. Well, I've recently been okay trying to do better. I've gotten like a beta blocker of my CBD. I have She's like everything trying to keep my heart calm, but it's always around three a.m. Like the which ring, is the witching hour they say where the veil is thinnest between this world and this world. I will take a, I could take a screenshot of my ring that now keeps track of it is my heart rate just going boom at 3 a.m. Waking me up out of my sleep. I don't see anything, but I'm just like, why am I panicking? I wasn't having a nightmare. I wasn't doing anything. Sometimes I just think that like, and my dreams are, you've really vivid dreams. Yeah. Do you ever try, but do you ever try and like, this sounds really crazy. Lisa, dream? Cut, cut it, edit it out. Dead. No, do you, the, do you ever though, when you're in those moments, like think like, should I be trying to contact like someone right now or letting come someone come through or something right now? Sometimes I do, but then I'm like, oh, I just get scared because I don't want to like open the portal to something that isn't good and i'm like I if it was like, like a fun guaranteed good fun <laughs> yeah. ghost it's like i want the 1920s yeah, yeah. hot flapper ghost yeah just trying to like put some lipstick on and like remember the give me a days. show yeah, yeah, yeah i want to talk about it yeah but, but, but no i just feel like there's too many demons that are pretending to be people or pretending to be i had like a dream about my grandmother who i was really close with and she was trapped in her house because she was passed away and she, she, I was with her in the house and she kept trying to leave. And every time she would open the door, there was nowhere to go. Kind of like a Beetlejuice where it's just like, oh, like you fall off the edge. Grandma. And I was like, she was got really upset and she wanted to leave the house. And I was like, grandma, you're not here anymore. Like you're past. And she's like, what? Like she couldn't process it. And it made me so upset. And I was with her in my dream. Like that gives me chills because I think that when, People like our relatives and stuff visit us yeah. in dreams. I do think it's like Let's a visit. Yeah. Him. Yeah. And then my Yorkie recently died. And when he oh. died, he was 16 years old and I didn't want to put him down. He really did not want to die. My grandmother really did not want to die. And so I was the three nights, three consecutive nights after he died, it was just me in a room hanging out with him, playing with him. And like just us playing oh. in like three nights in a row. And I was just like, and I thought he was still alive. And it was so strange. And I was like, this is so weird. And I'd wake back up and he, and I realized he was dead. And I was like, this is really weird. And then the night, like a couple of nights later, you know, I would hear his foot, his little feet on our carpet because he would run across the carpet and jump up on this pillow and get on the bed. And I woke up because I heard the on the carpet. And then I heard the jump on the pillow and I sat up and I was like, Nina, Nina. And then Nina came out from under the covers. So she was, was not next Nina. to me under the covers. And I was like, Wiki. <laughs> That's a ghost you want. I did say that. I was like, Wiki, come on, come on up. And like, I still, and I don't know if I'm just losing it, but like, I'll still randomly hear his, like, I'll hear his noises. And this happened when my other dog passed too. And I was very close with both of them. I think so. it's a visit. That's what I do I too. Think. I do think it was a visit. And I do think now he's passed on because it happened a lot within like the first two weeks. It was like, I kept getting... I kept seeing, Overload. hearing like weird things. And I was like, what the fuck? And then I think be like now it's kind of chilled out. So I think he's finally moved on. But yeah. Jeez. Yeah. I we mean, covered a lot here. We really, we went all across the, the spooky. <laughs> I feel like that. I could talk to you for another hour. We could talk forever. Oh my God. Okay. So I want everyone to follow your podcast, Cult Leiter, Cult which is Leiter. Cult, C-U-L-T, Leiter, L-I-T-E-R. Um, if you want to hear more about this like crazy macabre cult, cre you know, dark world that Spencer has culminated and like how i mean you have like a big pretty big following especially like for you know podcasts like 
No, it's great. I'm so proud of you. Like, honestly, <laughs> I'm like not even related to you, but I'm like really proud of you. The way, the way we met you 20 know, minutes like, ago. We're so like, so proud so of you. <laughs> like, you've come so far. I've known you your whole life. Um, but no, I, it's very cool. And honestly, because thank you for having me. This I'm was so, so happy much fun. to have you here. You came all the way from Long Beach. Jesus Christ. The LBC. LBC. Um, is there anything that you, anywhere else people should follow? I know you have your personal Instagram, but I don't know if you don't really post on there. Okay. Actually, that's like an anxiety. Well, the other night I went through like a manic episode and I deleted like every post. Oh, cause I was, I was like going to follow you. And then I was like, but he doesn't post. So I'm not, and I get anxiety on, on Instagram. Like I can only follow so many people or I get my posts are going to be worth it. No, I was telling you, I was like doing like a clean out so yeah. that I could like, okay. Refresh post what it. I want. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Cause so, I went on there and was like, Oh, I guess he's like not really into it. It was so like I just a didn't new year, you. like a new year. Like, why do I have these posts on here? Get them the fuck out of there. Like, <gasps> Oh my god okay because i was like because i always am like just trying to like protect my energy of like i don't know why when i scroll i mean you don't have I to scroll, follow no i will follow you <laughs> if i scroll too long i'm like this is giving me anxiety but like no i i will follow you now because i just wasn't sure if you wanted people to because i was like he had like five posts up but like 90,000 followers. So I was kind of like, how did that happen? Like, um, what's his, what's his what's problem? His well, deal? now you know. I know, now I know. Okay, so so you're Spencer Harry. Spencer Henry. Why do I I'm going to fucking lose it. God Harry. damn it. I'm out of here. Why do I keep saying Harry? Spencer Harry Henry. Henry. I don't know. Find Instagram. Spencer Harry too. Find Spence, Spencer Spence, Harry. Follow Spencer Harry. <laughs> Tell him I sent you. <laughs> Is there a Spencer, Spencer Harry? Spencer Harry's like, I'm so happy. It's like happy a senator. Yeah, He's yeah. like, whoa. Spencer Henry on Instagram and Cult Leader Podcasts. Um, dude, thank you so much thank for you. fucking coming out here today and expressing your inner workings and like sharing that fucking crazy yeah. story with Armin Mives and the fucking shitty Daybell people. Ew. Gross. Are they in jail forever? Uh, we hope so. They haven't had their trials yet, so. Ew, I hate them. I'm going to go Google them and just fucking send them hate. You can go down a wormhole. I probably told the most erratic version of that story and people are going to be like, what the fuck did he even just say? But it's it's a good story and I, ha I did the f I did four or five parts on them on the podcast too wow. but you have to come talk about aliens with me one I day. will so we're gonna I, plan that and I can't I just can't with people that kill their children that's just like ugh, so fucked up children really mean like, and common oh so weird like I just don't anyway we well, could talk for <laughs> guys we could keep going on this podcast for three months Follow Spencer Henry on Instagram and the Cult Lady Podcast if you want to get more information. And thank you again for all tuning in to another episode of Worst First. Hopefully it wasn't the worst first time you heard about cults <laughs> <laughs> and people eating other people. Anyway, we'll see you next week on another episode. Bye.